Welcome to Heart to Heart. Thank you for joining us from around the world. Today, we will talk from the heart of the Father to my heart, to you, the heart of each and every one of you that are tuned in today and whenever you're listening on OCN. The Word of God is very simple, and we bring a simple format to discuss the Word of God so we will be able to take out every excuse. It's not at a level where you will not understand. It's at a level where you're having a conversation. And the conversation is about the word of God. And the conversation is about how you can become a believer of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I started this session by saying, welcome. When you believe in the word of God and you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are welcome to come and sup with him. He made it possible for each and every one, <clears throat> excuse me, to have that opportunity to participate and be a part of the word of God. Our topic today, faith opens the doors to you for Jesus. Faith opens the doors to you for Jesus. Jesus will come in and sup with you. He will come in and sit at the table with you. He will come in and have a conversation with you. By faith, you can do that. By faith, you can ask anything of him. And he said, it shall be done. We, we talked in previous sessions about the Canaanite woman and how the Canaanite woman came to Jesus asking Jesus to heal her daughter. Her daughter was vexed with the spirit in Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 22 through 28. You can read the story. Jesus did not come to the Canaanites at that point in time. He came to the Israelites. But he did not leave her hopeless. He left her with a blessing. Because she had faith to know that if she came and asked for healing for her daughter, that Jesus would heal her daughter. And it said, after she agreed with him, you're right, Lord. She said, but the dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. And Jesus said, well said. He said, your faith, the faith that was built up in that mother, the faith that was built up in that woman, to know that Jesus had healing virtues, that all he had to do was speak the word. You can have that same faith. You can have that same faith today, right now. Those of you that are believers, I say have greater faith. Jesus spoke about those things that we will be able to do. He said greater things you will do. I want to be a part of that greater and we know the story of how he healed the lame. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. He did all of those things while he was on earth. And he said, we will be able to do greater things by faith in him, by utilizing the faith. We need to establish greater faith. And for those of you that are not believers, you will have your opportunity to become believers by faith, believing that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for your sins. And making that confession, you also can become a believer in the Lord and Savior. Now, the woman's account in the scripture, they are very helpful to all of us because it shows Jesus had compassion on behalf of this woman and her request for her daughter. This woman may have thought that if I just get close to him, 
if I can get in his presence and talk to him, she left nothing undone to get into his presence, to receive that gift of healing for her daughter. You have to have faith to believe. Your healing may be spiritual healing. There are so many wounded people. There are so many damaged people. There's so many people that you talk to, they'll give you a story of who did this and what happened and all of that. They need spiritual healing. Jesus is the healer. Your faith can cause that healing to take place. If that's the healing that you need, you may need physical healing, healing in your body. You may need mental healing. The word of Jesus cut through every barrier, through every spirit. You may need healing for a family member. You may even need financial healing. Whatever healing that you need, bring your measure of faith and go to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is your healer. He is your comforter. Insert whatever need that you have, or not just for you. It could be for anyone. Bring that concern to Jesus. Bring it with a pure heart. Bring it with the faithfulness to know that he will deliver. Just like with the Canaanite woman. He, it wasn't her time at that time. Now the doors are open. It is your time every time. And he's waiting on us. He's waiting on me. He's waiting on you. Anyone can call on him. But call on him with a plan. Call on him for that financial healing. But be willing and able to, to go out and cause that action to happen. Faith without works is dead. See it, whatever that is. If you're not walking, see yourself walking. If you're not hearing, see yourself hearing. Whatever the need is, see yourself in that place. See him fulfilling that need. See yourself in the future doing something different than what you're doing today. Jesus being the author and the finisher of our faith. Being full of faith can cause mountains to move. He says that we have that ability. Utilize that ability to decide that you aren't taking no for an answer. Decide that faith will open the door for you to get to Jesus. Jesus is already there. He's waiting for you. Jesus has already done what he said he will do. He's waiting for you and I. So when we look at Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, New King James Version. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What are you doing now? You're hearing. You're hearing. This word is true. You're seeing because you're reading the word. Now believing by faith that this word is true. It is so true that you can speak a thing. And he says it's so. And when we look at the, the New Testament, we see that so many things that was said, it came true. But you are in the New Testament. You are a part of the New Testament. Be a receiver of the word. Be a receiver and a believer by faith that is still true for you today. It's easy to have faith to sit in the chair and believe the chair is going to hold you up. It is easy to believe 
that you turn on a light switch and that light is going to come on. Have faith to tap into what God has for you. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. He didn't say it might. He said to ask by faith and you will receive. Leaving no doubt. Just like the Canaanite woman, she left no doubt. Even when the disciples say, just tell her to, to go away. Jesus wanted to hear what she had to say. And she received her healing for her daughter. Faith caused that to happen. Now, let's turn to Hebrews 11, verse 5 and 6. In Hebrews 11, verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that pleased God. What is your testimony? What's coming out of your mouth? Are you pleasing God? Are you saying those things that God has said? Are you believing those things that need be? Are you exhibiting that kind of faith? That is the faith that is necessary to please God, to enter into the realm of faithfulness. Are you faithful? And faithful comes in so many different angles. A lot of us, I know I was, I was faithful to my job for 43 years. I punched that time clock every day that I was supposed to punch that time clock. I was there and not just in body, doing my job. But for a lifetime, you can be faithful to Jesus for eternity, for eternity. Now, we're faithful to a lot of stuff. I can go up to the drinking fountain to get some water and push that button, and I'm ex I have an expectation that water is coming out. Exercise that faithfulness in Jesus Christ. Exercise that faithfulness that God will do what he said, not what I said, but what the word said that he would do. He does those things for us. And as you exercise your faith, faith builds. Faith builds eternally inside. You can continue. When you get to the point where you can lay hands on the dead like Jesus did and they, they, they got up. When you lay hands on the blind and they are healed, it's not you that's doing the healing. It is the faith in Jesus Christ that he will do what his word says that he will do. You can exercise that faith. You can see yourself in that position. You can clear out a hospital. Exercise that faith. If having faith the size of a seed can cause a mountain to move, it can cause a hospital to be cleared out of sick people. It could cause people that are impoverished to be unimpoverished. It could cause people that have whatever need needs to be met just by faith just by faith, to think that we have this and we don't have that ability, exercise your faith in Jesus. Exercise your faith to the degree that you know that Jesus Christ is doing those things that he said he would do for you. Now, verse 6 tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe 
that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. None of that changed. Enoch said out of his mouth with faith that he would be translated. And his translation occurred. He was not seen. He was not found. Because God translated him. Do you have that kind of faith? That you would not see death? That God will translate you? You can have it. You can have it. You diligently seek him with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Put everything you got into it. First, to clear up you. Then you can help others. I can help others. To, a, to a, a, achieve that greater faith is greater results. We can exhibit that faith. We can walk by faith and not by sight. It's not in us that we do it, but it's in Jesus. Believe and receive. It takes that kind of faith to move in the spirit realm. Just talking about it and reading about it, believing it, believing it, and knowing it for yourself. We can easily just talk ourselves out of anything. We, we tell ourselves it's not for us. That was in the Bible days that happened so long ago, and it's not for me, and, and, and it's for the other folks, and, and it's not my time yet. We can come up with some excuses. It belongs to you. Whatever it is that you are desiring, it belongs to you by faith, by speaking what God's word says that we need to speak, by expressing what he has expressed. And stop making excuses, because we can make all kinds of excuses for why we didn't do this or why we didn't do that. We can say a lot about our situation and, and excuse it away. But as a believer, I must show faith. I must walk by that faith. I must call those things that be not as though, though they were. I must exemplify that to others to become believers that they may see the work of Jesus Christ in me, that they may see the faith that I have in Jesus and want to say, can I have that too? What must I do to be saved? What must I do to have that kind of faith? Hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, exercising that faith in Jesus, believing what Jesus has already said about you. Now, when we go to James chapter 2, verse 25 and verse 26, it says, likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. I tell my granddaughter to study. I tell my granddaughter to be the best student but she can't be the best student if she's not picking up her books, if she's not going to class and being a good student, if she's not opening her ears to learn, and anybody else's child. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can teach them in so many ways, but your examples are teaching them as well. And you can show them your faith by what you're doing. Not just what you're saying, it's by what you're doing. Because, see, Rahab has something that no other woman has had. 
we, we just said who, what, what kind of woman she was. She was a harlot. But she had some faith. She'd heard about what God had done for the Israelites. So when they were spying out the land, she told them that it brought fear into them. But she did what she needed to do to help them. And she hid them. And when they came and asked her about it, she said, oh, no, they went out the other way. And she had them hid all along. But look at what happened. We know her name now. We know Rahab and her family was saved. We know Rahab is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Look at what her faith bought her. The Canaanite woman, look at what her faith bought her. You have that same faith. It's not just for them. It's not just for somebody else. It's for you also. Knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior is paramount. That's the big picture. That's everything. That's all at all. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you are. You can confess Jesus Christ as Lord, as Savior, and believe that he was raised from the dead. And you can have that same faith. You have faith to do everything else. There's nothing under the sun that a man has done that Jesus did not die for because he died for one thing and one thing alone, sin. We're all a sinners shaped in iniquity, but we're believers and he covered all of our sins. Rahab demonstrated action. We need to demonstrate some action. Rahab was enlightened. She heard. She obeyed. She exhibited enough faith that she concealed the spies because their mission was important. Because of her faith, her life, her family life, her lineage was changed forever. We will forever remember her. We will forever talk about her. And so will yours. Your family life could change just by faith just by you demonstrating that faith for an individual, for a loved one, for someone in your family. Don't have any excuses. Faith is a muscle. Exercise that muscle. Your mind, your heart, your soul into everything. Talk about it. Enoch talked about it. He saw himself being translated. God translated him. The thing that we need to do as believers is continue to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So shall it be. So shall it manifest. Faithfulness first to God, our Father, and to our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Because without that faith, we, we won't please him. We won't please him. Nothing in us would please him. It is only by faith. And for those of you that are not believers in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can be saved today. You can have this salvation today just by confessing Jesus as your Lord and your Savior by praying a simple prayer. Just repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I receive you. I believe you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead and now live. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for praying that prayer with me. Have faith to believe that you are now saved. Jesus will do his part. These are his words. He will do what he said he would do. He will save you, bring you into the kingdom of God. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life because you made that confession. By making that confession, the angels are just rejoicing. We would like to share that joy and rejoice with you. Let us know if you prayed that prayer for the first time if you committed or recommitted your life back to Jesus, write us and let us know. We just want to pray with you and pray for you. We want to have the same rejoicing that the word of God is going to the people of God. And we thank each and every one of you for taking the time out to hear what the word has to say to your heart. You're no longer lost. You're no longer lost. You are part of the family of God. And we applaud you. Read God's word. Understand his word. Exercise your faith. Go out and lay hands on somebody. Go out and do something that you haven't done. Exercise that faith in Jesus Christ. You can build your faith. Read his word. Understand his word. Go forth in the power of the Lord. There's salvation in his words. Salvation, saving in his word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for today. Thank you for those that are hearing your word and believing your word. Thank you for this platform on OCN that your word is going forth to a dying world in search of a Lord, in search of a Savior. We thank and praise you. All the honor is yours. All the glory is yours. We take nothing for ourselves. We are your servants at ministering your holy word to the people of God. We thank and praise you, Lord Jesus all those that are hearing and understanding. We thank you for them. Holy Spirit, touch their hearts. Guide their souls. I'll take them to the next level. After confessing and believing that Jesus is Lord, we rejoice with all our heart. We thank you for joining us today on OCN. On Heart to Heart, be blessed. Amen.